Hi everyone. I just finished a fantastic young adult book called The Memory of Light, and I wanna tell you about it, but before I do, I have to give you a trigger warning. The main character of the book is suicidal, and you know, there are some difficult subjects explored in the book. But if that's something that you're okay reading about, then stay tuned because I really wanna recommend this book. The Memory of Light by Francisco X. Stork begins with the main character, Vicky, who has just attempted suicide. And she wakes up in the hospital only to discover that she survived her suicide attempt. And she's really disappointed because she genuinely wants to die. And so she's in this hospital thinking that, you know, she survived this attempt, but she believes she's going to try again, first chance she gets. Um, however, when she's in the hospital, she befriends her roommate, Mona, who um, introduces her to Gabriel and EM. And the four of them go to group therapy with Dr. Desai, and they each discuss their various... Um, situations in their lives and all four of them are in crisis. Vicky um, wants to die and she doesn't know why either. I think it's noteworthy that, you know, she seems to have it all together. She seems to have, you know, the perfect life and yet she's just so unhappy and she wants to die and she feels almost guilty for that. But um, as the story unfolds, she comes to terms with the fact that she has a clinical depression and that she, um, you know, can get some help and can possibly, um, with medicine or help or therapy, she hasn't decided yet which one she's going to do, um, but she can improve her state of um, emotions. And then um, Mona is just, uh, she's just a character. She's just really funny and kind of wild. Um, in the beginning, the book says, that she meets Mona the the live wire, Gabriel the saint, and EM the always angry. So those are the four. Mona is just, um, she's a live wire. I mean, she's just always saying and doing um, un unexpected things. And she's just a really good friend to Vicky. And she's um, sweet and funny. But as we get to know Mona, we find that, you know, she's had some pretty horrible things happen in her life. And um, she has some problems that seem insurmountable sometimes. And then Gabriel and EM are two teenage boys in the story. Um, EM has anger management. And I don't want to tell you what Gabriel's um, need is, why he's in the hospital, because that's something that the book reveals um, later in the story as the story unfolds. And I really felt like um, In the Memory of Light was a very... Um, fair and honest portrayal of um, mental illness. In fact, I mean, of course, nobody is exactly the same, you know, and the four characters in the book, they all deal with their mental illness very differently too, and they all have different types of mental illness. But I felt like it was a very real, um, honest portrayal of what these characters were going through. And I cared very much about these characters and really enjoyed reading about how they related to one another and how they um, attempted their struggles, you know, how they tried to overcome their various struggles in life. And you, you also get to meet some of their families. And I thought that was nice to try and find out a little bit about, you know, the families at home and a little bit of what they might be dealing with too. Um, the memory of light felt awfully real as I was reading it. I felt like, wow, this author, um, Francisco X. Stork, really seems to be writing from a, a, a very deep sense of, of uh, sincerity or truth. And sure enough, after the book, there's an author's note where he explains why he wrote the book and his own experience with the topic. And he does it so much better than I could. So I'm going to read the author's note at the end of the book. Um, and 
let you listen to the words of the author himself um, as he very powerfully explains his own experience with teen suicide. Author's note. One December morning, 37 years ago, I found myself at Stillman Infirmary, a 10-bed facility of Harvard University Health Services. I was lying on a very tall bed, looking out the window at the first snowflakes of the season. The doctor who treated me when the Harvard police brought me in um, the night before had just finished telling me that I was out of the woods. That's in quotes. I was fortunate. My roommate's sister had unexpectedly returned home before the 60 or so assorted pills I swallowed could complete my intended task. I don't remember what I was thinking about as I watched the snowflakes float slowly down. It's possible that I was going over the implication of the doctor's words. I was physically out of the woods, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. I was in the thick of them. One key to the long, painful process of getting out of those other woods was the eventual realization that I was ill. The illness that sought to diminish and extinguish my life is called depression. Observing it, knowing when to fight it and when to surrender to it, functioning despite it, befriending it whenever possible is part of my everyday existence. Living with depression has taught me many valuable truths about myself, about others, about life and its purpose. One of the things I learned is that the act that brought me to Stillman when I was 24 was not caused by whatever circumstances I was finding unbearable at the time. Taking the pills was simply the ultimate symptom of a disease that I have been able to trace all the way back to my teenage years. I did not know I was depressed when I was 14. I'm not sure I even knew that something was wrong. I only knew that I hurt inside and talking to someone about that hurt was not an option. I was too ashamed to admit to anyone, even to myself, that I felt constantly sad and lonely and unworthy. I know now that had I been able to share my feelings with someone who did ju not judge me weak or ungrateful, for I had many good things going for me, I might not have tried to end my life 10 years later. It is my hope that Vicki's story will make it easier for young people to recognize depression in themselves and others and to feel more comfortable talking about it. Listed here are some places where you can read more about depression or talk to compassionate, non-judgmental persons who will listen and understand. And then the author goes on to um, list some, um, some supports, and I will put them below in the description. But um, the first two are National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 1-800-273-TALK, which would be 8255, or the Trevor Project, which it says is especially for LGBTQ young people, and the phone number is 1-866-488-7386, and then there's the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Um, there's no phone number for that one. Um, there's no phone number for the other ones. There's a teenager's guide to depression and my broken palace. Um, I will put all that in the description box because I thought that this was really very powerful and I really enjoyed this book very much. I highly recommend this book. I liked the characters. Um, I thought the writing was beautiful and I just... I'm all about affirming life. I love how the character went from um, wanting to die to making friends with other people and not only learning to want to live, but then connecting to others and to want them to live and to sort of build relationships with them and, and to build support from um, each other. So I really, I loved this book. I thought it was really good and I highly recommend the memory of light.